10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Good luck, studio. And now, another really exciting episode of the Shy Life Podcast. <laughs> All I wanted was a pie. And then I hatched out with an egg. Okay, bring the mic over. He's ready to record. It's the quiet ones you've got to watch, you know. Is it metaphorical? Is it, is it deep? Is it deep? But that boy, he's had all that shy is right. <laughs> Blimey, Governor. It's the Shy Life Podcast. Excellent. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Shy Life Podcast with me, Paul the Shy Yeti. How are you doing? I'm all right. So, what's this episode going to be about? Well, um, uh, I've actually been busy um, working on a commission, not like August does with his paintings, although um, the subject of the, the work I've been doing is actually August Evans. It was all a bit of a surprise, to be honest. Um, I had a phone call from Bettina asking if I could do her a favour. I mean, this wasn't like popping down the shops for a pint of milk type of favour. It, it was quite a big favour. Let me run the theme music, and when we come back, I'll explain exactly what happened. Run that theme music. Darling, it's a shy life podcast. <laughs> yes, but it's a positive theme song. The highlights, the shy life. You won't find a cast of characters like this everywhere. Hello, Paul. I'll, I'll go there anyway for potato. Delicious. Hello, Captain. How are you? You quite like a big fan, don't you? Paul? <laughs> go shy, Yeti. Oh, I hope you haven't found out my secret. Maybe he has. If you thought that was bad, listen to this. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for you. It's the Shy Life Podcast. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm strangely drawn to Yeti Uncle John's angles as well. <laughs> but has the Shy Life Podcast, though, Dan? I don't think so. It's all green and easy. Yum, 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 yum. Has anyone seen my hot sausage? <laughs> Hello, listeners. P- apologies if I'm a bit snuffly. I don't think it's anything serious, but uh, I think it's pollen-related. I'm a little bit snuffly, and uh, I've only just woken up. So <laughs> um, so let me tell you what um, I was asked to do. Well, I suppose the best way of doing so is to uh, share with you this phone call I had with Bettina. Have a listen. Darling, I know this is a big ask, but I wondered if you could help. Of course I can help, Tina. What do you want me to do? Oh, darling, it's nothing massive. Um, I just want you to, um, well, <laughs> speak to a few people, darling. Speak to a few people and put together a documentary about August. You want me to do what? Uh, as I said, I know it's a big ask. We need a documentary. It doesn't have to be very long. And it doesn't have to be about, well... It, it, it could literally start when he turned up in Pickle Hollow, you know. Um, we don't have to talk about Damnus or, or his life before. It doesn't have to be historical. It just has to be, a, you know, talking heads, people saying how wonderful he is, and looking into, you know, how he emerged onto the art scene in, in Pickle Hollow and, uh, you know, the phenomenon that is August Evans. Oh. Well, how long have I got to do it? Why is it you need this? Oh, it's for... Uh, there's a, 
a retrospective of his work uh, coming up, and they want a, a a short film to play before before he comes on stage. A retrospective of his work. He's only been August Evans for about eighteen months or something. I know, darling. Well, but in that time, he has done so much work. Um, you know, he's so prolific. I suppose he is. Yes, he is prolific, and there is a lot of work. Um, I, sp- I suppose he's painted as much in 18 months as some people have painted in, in absolutely years and years. Absolutely, darling. This is my point. Well, will you do it? Uh, sure. Sure, I, I can... I mean, I guess I'd mostly be talking to, um, um, you know, people in Pickle Hollow and, um, and maybe... Well, he's like yourself, and uh, maybe some of the regulars. I, I don't know that many people. I don't know how many other people you can put me in contact with. No, darling, that'll be fine. Uh, how long have I got to do this? Well, well you know, it's not long. Um, about 48 hours, darling. 48 hours? Oh, my goodness. It'll take long enough to edit it. Oh, well, you know, as I say, it just has to be short. All right, all right, I'll do it. And, and, and do you want to be paid, darling? Um, what, in money? Um, no, it's a favour. Take me out for dinner or something. Oh, darling, we'll do that. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. Oh, Paul, you're, you're, you're an absolute uh, saviour. Thank you. It's, it's fine, it's fine, Bettina. I'm, I suppose I'd better get on with it. Oh, thank you, darling. Um, I'll get a list together of names I need to speak to and, and be prepared to be available. Of course, darling. Absolutely. All right, I better go. All right, darling. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Eight hours to put together a documentary about August Evans to be shown at some art festival, and I just started making a list of people to speak to. Thankfully, everybody was available, and uh, well, I uh, I got to work on it. Um, oh dear, oh dear! No wonder I'm a bit snuffly though. I think it's taken it out of me a bit. Um, but uh, anyway, um, it, it's all ready for you to hear. I mean, thankfully, everything was very pleased to be involved. And, uh, yeah. Hello? Hello, Toppy, it's me, Paul. How are you? Oh, hey, I'm good. How about you? Oh, you're not too bad. Um, I need to ask you a favour. Uh, Actually, it's sort of a favour that Bettina's asked me, but I, I need... I've said, I've said, well, let, let me explain. Um, she has asked me to do a documentary about August Evans um, because he's about to be honoured. There's some sort of retrospective of his, of his work. Although he's only been doing art for like 18 months, he's done so much in such a short time uh-huh. that there's a particular place that want, you know that they're, they're showing a range of his work and they want to start um, the event with a documentary and then he'll be... He'll be asked on stage but it's all very short notice i've been given 48 hours to do 48 hours yeah 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 um so i'm gonna i'll be talking to my people but i was wondering if you could mobilize uh anybody who knew august when he you know because they're not talking about the damiest years we're, we're, we're just kind of uh, starting at the point where he arrived at pickle hollow and was right, no, right. started to be noticed so um it it's it because it, i think the, in the in the history of August, Pickle Hollow is very important because it's where he was first discovered or first noticed. Um, yeah. So any any comments we could get, any vox pops, any sort of little comments, um, that would be great. But I'm I'm going to be doing a lot of the interviews in the next few hours, and but I can leave yours to to the end, um, and then I can edit it, edit it into the mix uh, in the right order later. So 
I know, I know it's not much time, and, and I don't know who will be willing to talk. But Well, um, let, let me think about that, Paul. Uh, let's see now. Who who uh, was part of that? Well, certainly there's there's me, of course, and, and, and Aunt Tappy. And she was certainly involved. Well, of course, also uh, Walter Snicker Snicker and Jose mm-hmm. Santos, they – they they uh, exhibited his paintings yes, that's what at I was uh, Jose's hideaway. But there's a problem, Paul. Uh, Quentin mm. Quill was certainly he uh, uh, boarded uh, mm. August. Yes. And, and uh, but you know the last time I, I saw uh, poor uh, Quentin, he was c- carried off by a killer gerbil. Oh uh-huh, yeah. Have, we haven't seen him since. No. No. I, I don't know. I can't get him. But let me see who else. Who else? It just occurred to me also because you and um, didn't you, you and uh, Aunt Tappy never really. He, I don't did Aunt Tappy meet him, but you you didn't because you'd have recognised him as you only heard about it later. So I mean, we can still talk. We can still get you to talk. Um, yeah, Aunt uh, Tappy uh, never actually saw no, him, but uh, no, but you you can you can talk about that as part of the mystery that that um, you never realised it was somebody you knew. We don't we won't get too much into the damiest thing because I think that would just okay. Be painful, but, but we can still talk to you about um, had you met him, you would have realised you knew him. Um, uh, and we can we can we will steer around that and and and, and yeah I think we're still worth talking to you both. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, did Sassy Sassy didn't meet him? I, I can't remember. Oh yeah, uh, oh, you know, quite honestly, I can't remember either. No. But let's say he did. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, well, you 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 talk to whoever you can get hold of, and then um, I'll I'll um. Just sort of catch them on 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 Skype or something, and and uh, and then I'll put it all into the documentary, and and then there'll be plenty of voices. I mean, it doesn't it's not going to be terribly long, but it would be nice to get people from Pickle Hollow who 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 knew him when he first arrived. But, uh, yeah, that, that sounds good. I, I'm sure they'll they, they'll be willing to spend a few minutes yeah. uh, being interviewed. Yeah, I'll, I'll let them know. And uh, what, what do I do? Give give a call back or give yeah, them? Yeah, just just uh, or send me a text or something, and then yeah, we'll and then. Uh, as I say, I'll put you to the end of the schedule, and then um, we can record it uh, whenever it suits you. And uh, uh, but I can edit it in the right order. I've got to, oh dear, I've got to have to be pretty speedy to get it off to them. But uh, okay, yeah, I, I I can record it, you know, whenever I want to, as long as it's in the next eight hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. good. Okay, well, I'll I'll speak to you in a bit. And uh, thanks for arranging this. I'm sorry it's short notice, but uh, oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, well, we'll get it together. Cool. Great. Okay. Speak to you in a bit. Okay, bye. I suppose I took about a day to record it all, and uh, a day or so to edit it, but uh, um, anyway, it's very few to hear. Obviously, you can't see it, but uh, there is actually a visual version, of course, but... uh, why don't you sit back and listen to the, the, to my documentary? Um, it has been made in such a way because um, apparently it, it's also going to be broadcast um, like uh, on on, a, on a, a local radio station at the same time. So so it works fine visually or audi- audibly. Or <laughs> yeah, okay. Have a listen. I hope you enjoy it. Today we'll be speaking about August Evans, one of the most exciting talents in the art world to have emerged in the last few years. But unlike many new stars of the art world, he'd been around for quite a few years, just not as a painter. In fact, it all started as just a hobby. Although August is UK based, he was holidaying in Pickle Hollow in America just relaxing and painting, but he was there for a number of weeks and gradually got a following. He started to take commissions and people got very excited about his work. One of Pickle Hollow's most um, uh, famous residents is Toppy Smelly and um, I I spoke to Toppy recently and asked him about uh, whether he encountered August Evans when he was visiting. Now, now Toppy, I, I, am I right in saying that uh, you never actually um, 
you know, you, you, you're like ships that crossed in the night. You, you never actually found out that August was who he was and until after he'd gone. Well, it's true. I, I didn't, I had no idea. Yeah. I, I, I never met um, August before, mm. you know, when he was someone else. And so I had no idea. And, you know, my friend, uh, my good buddy, Walter Snicker Snicker introduced me to him. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, I just, you know, I I knew he was from elsewhere, and he had kind of a, you know, he definitely had an accent, but he just seemed like a, a traveling uh, artist who, you know, set up his easel. Because you, you were one of the you're one of the few people who who knew him before, but had you realized? But obviously, by the time he came to Pickle Hollow, um, he he let his hair grow, and he and he was he looked quite different, and and so it was understandable not to realize. And, uh, but but. When you saw his work, uh, you probably saw his work more than you saw the person. Um, did you see the talent? Uh, did you would, it, it, when you saw um, the paintings? Did you did you say, "Wow, this is somebody who's going to go, you know, as far as he has gone"? Oh yeah, the paintings. So oh yeah, boy, did I ever. You know, I could spot. Te- well, no, I actually, I got to say, I was taken aback by um, how some people were. Uh, all over uh, his stuff, and um, you know, I'm, well, you know, just to be honest with you, I, I did not uh, see uh, what was is all. It was very abstract at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I remember that, and um, you know, little circles and squares, and then he did a this kind of unique squiggle, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I, I, I just. Well, I mean, I was complimentary, but I didn't know what the hell I was looking at, to be honest. I think it probably took a while for um, the full range of his styles to emerge. And uh, his time in Pickle Hollow is when that was happening. So yeah. uh, the abstract stuff was happening at this point. And since then, he's, you know, he still does the odd shape or color type um, abstract um, yeah. piece. but then he does commissions where it's like someone's taken a, a photo uh, it, it, uh, it, it that 18 months it, I mean I think that's why people celebrate him is because it, it all happened so quickly it's all you know yeah. and so much work so quick so quickly and, and yet wow sort of just the same person doing all these things um, it's true it, it was a, it was startling like you could, you could see him growing uh, and his artist self emerging i mean the last thing he painted before he flew out of town quite suddenly mm. was an amazing uh, portrait of, of bettina dupre mm. looked just like her yeah. looked just like her it was amazing yeah i think they i think um shit I'm not sure. Does she does she own the original now, or whether he he does so many? He may have done new versions. He's done a lot of, but well, he's done a lot recently, uh, a lot of, for a particular commission, a lot of paintings of Patina. Actually, that's uh, still over there at Jose's Hideaway. Uh, and um, but you know what? I mean, we could arrange if if Patina's interested, we could certainly certainly arrange to to get that over to her. He, she probably should own it. Another of Pickle Hollow's residents who knew August before he became August is Aunt Tappy. Um, Aunt Tappy, you never actually got to see August uh, when he was in town, but uh, did it shock you to discover that this new artist was somebody who you actually knew under a, 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 a different guise? Well... Paul, I certainly was shocked because had I run into or had been introduced to this itinerant painter earlier, I could have solved the whole dilemma about this poor missing man. But anyways, I wasn't, and so I never did meet him, and uh, hence August Evans' rather long stay in Pickle Hollow, and uh, I missed it entirely. I mean, the people who did spent a lot of time with him, weren't really familiar with him in his old life um, because he, although he had visited, it, it was more, you know, with, with you or with, or, or, or with, with Toppy, but with but, Toppy. Yes. That's the funny thing. Dear. You know, Paul, sometimes that 
Toppy can be a bit of a ninny, but also I rather think his classes need an update on their prescription because honestly, I can't believe he didn't recognize August Evan for the person he truly was at the time. Anyways, I understand now. Well, I don't know. Is he going to be August forever? Well, um, I think uh, at, the, uh, at the moment, it seems to be what's bringing him the most success. And uh, he's, being, um, uh, he's being celebrated uh, um, for all the work he's done in such a short time. He, he, um, now he is not only known in Pickle Hollow, but he's known um, in London, in, in, uh, you know, all, over the, all over the place. People, are, uh, are, are, people want to see him and, and speak to him. Well, I'm flabbergasted because I saw his early work and was rather not impressed. But I must say, during his time in Pickle Hollow, his style evolved. And uh, I'd say the last things he were doing, they were rather good. Now, <clears throat> I must say, I am still surprised that he's reached such heights of fame and that his work seems to be in demand. So, but anyways, I think it's wonderful and I know Bettina's happy about it, so that's all that concerns me, is dear Bettina's happiness. So, oh, I'm amazed. It does seem very much that uh, uh, you know, the, his time in Pickle Hollow, um, although it was it, quite a lot of things went on, um, it, it, it ended up with him returning to the UK, and in the end he was reunited with Bettina, who he'd had a relationship with before he, before he was an artist. And uh, now, of course, they're, they're married, so you, as, as a good friend of Bettina's, must be very happy that things have, well, that there's been a happy ending. Well, I, I'm absolutely delighted and so happy for Bettina and August. So happy for them. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And by the way, um, I'd be delighted to get that painting of Bettina uh, created and, and shipped over to her if she'd like it. So you let her know, okay, Paul, dear? I would. Thank you very much, Aunt Abby. All right. Another of Pickle Hollow's residents who did spend quite a bit of time with Orbs Evans is Walter Snickerson. Ah, uh, one in Pickle Hollow, eat at Jose's Hideaway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, you know what? I kind of think of myself as his discoverer. I think I can say that, Paul. Um, and, and, and I think it's true. I discovered August Evans. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, he has gone on to so, so much uh, acclaim in, in the recent months. It's been a, a whirlwind. But uh, Oh, um, yeah. You know, at first, we were just amazed uh, at this guy who just came to Pickle Hollow out of nowhere. And you know what, Paul? He didn't have a dime. Not a dime. So, well, I was uh, I was worried about the poor fella and uh, his little easel and paintbrushes. And, uh, well, we just uh, fed him a meal at Jose's Hideaway. Why don't Pickle Hollow eat at Jose's Hideaway? Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we fed him. And uh, the rest is history. Uh, to pay us back, he did a pine time. And that was how it all started. You know what? We've still got a lot of his stuff exhibited here. And you know what? The odd thing is, because he uses organic materials, Paul, well, a lot of his earlier works are a little moldy now. So I don't know. Uh, August may want to come back and sort of, I don't know, give him a shellacking or something because they're a little tactile now. It's almost like carpet art with the oh. the stuff grow, the stuff oh. growing on it. Gosh. Um, I know this is a bit of a sensitive question, but, oh. um, well, um, what another Pickle Hollow resident who is no longer, well, um, with us, uh, uh, Quinton Quill, he 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 put um, he he put uh, August Evans up in his house for a while. Uh, is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, <clears throat> that Quentin Quill was a queer fellow. Uh, anyways, yeah, he had that um, cottage by the lake and a lot of room. And I'm not exactly sure how it happened. If I asked or or Quentin Quill volunteered, um, but he certainly saw his work and. And yeah, wanted to give the the poor guy the you know a place to live for heaven's sakes, 
and uh, and so he set up shot. You know what? Quentin Quill gave him this beautiful room with North Light, and 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 Quentin made it his painting studio, and it was pretty neat. It, it, it's um, you know, it says a lot about Pickle Hollow that how uh, the, the 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 community um em- embraced this the stranger and and oh uh, yeah, we're a friendly group. When in Pickle Hollow, eat at Jose's Hideaway, Pickle Hollow, New York. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I I think that. Uh, you we know, do burritos. I, That's oh. what I mean. Then you. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. Uh, no, that's no, okay. I, I've been. I've been, and I, I loved it. I, I, I'd, I'd go every day if I lived in Pickle Hollow. <laughs> well, of course you would. <laughs> By the way, my husband, authentic Mexican cooking, because that, that's where he's from, Mexico. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. he is, Jose. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, we sure love to have August come back, and we'd make it an event. Well, we'd have, we'd cater the whole thing. We could do it right here at Jose's Hideaway, Pickle Hall, and I, it would be great. I think that's something that will uh, definitely be on his itinerary in, in the All near right. future. Yeah. Yeah, and then he could shellac his old paintings. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, August Evans left your hollow, and uh, although his exact movements are known, partially due to the fact that it all occurred during the pandemic. He eventually ended back in the UK and was reunited with many of his friends from the Shy Life podcast. Many of them were quite surprised at how he had changed and how suddenly all he could think about was art. Um, So you see Uncle John. Um, You're one of the few people who knew August Evans um, back in the day. Um, You'd not seen him for uh, a year or so uh, and he he came back to uh, the UK. Yes, yes, well, we didn't know what he'd been up to. Um, he'd been travelling, uh, and, uh, yeah, he, he came back and he lived, actually, you know, in in the house where, where I lived, and, and, and I got to spend quite a lot of time with him. Um, you know, we were quite a tight-knit bunch on the Shy Life podcast, and uh, so, so he took part as well. But uh, it became quite evident that his art was more than just, uh, you, you know, just doodling. It, it was actually... Uh, you know, art that people wanted to see, and uh, it, it, it uh, makes me very happy to uh, to think that uh, I was there when he first started. Yes, well, well he he'd been uh, painting in uh, in Pickle Hollow, of course. Yes, oh, I believe that's where he, his uh, first um, signs of, of a following came from. You know, people were very interested. He was just painting away, and people started to notice. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, and then eventually, did he ever talk too much about his work? No, not really. He did do some paintings of me. Um, he, 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 uh, his style is very, uh, well, you know, it, it ranges from, from being quite abstract to being sort of traditional portraits. And uh, there are one or two pictures of me that he did where I look more like a, a pineapple than, than a Yeti Uncle John. But uh, uh, but then there are ones where you can, you know, it's like someone's taken a photo of me, uh, only it's a painting. You know, he, his style's just, it's almost like he, 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 he just, he starts painting. It's like a magic. He's, he's magic. Yeah, definitely. He, he's got a certain magic about him. returned. Uh, I miss him. Uh, we used to have lovely chats. Uh, also, of course, um, uh, he had been engaged to my friend Virginia Dupre, but uh, things had been slightly rocky for a number of years. So, you know, I was very glad those two got back together. Um, I think August um, needed that time away to develop his talents. And, uh, you know, having returned to the UK, he was a new man. But after developing his artwork, he was able to allow certain aspects of his old life to return. And, uh, you know, these artistic types. He really, I think he's a genius. Um, I, I, as an alien myself, I've been able to uh, introduce him to other planets where he's also a silly deal out there. Um, he never seems to burn out 
he's always keen to paint more paintings. And, uh, you know, he truly is perhaps the first intergalactic um, artist, um, you know, someone who started on Earth but has spread out into space. And, you know, I, I don't want to take credit for that, but I kind of, <laughs> I kind of suppose I ought to. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, uh, August Evans. Uh, well, he and I shared a space in um, Paul's house uh, when he returned. I have a laboratory um, under Paul's house where I do my experiments. And also I do my work on preserving a lot of Paul's um, video work from the past. And uh, I, I shared a space with uh, August. I think, you know... At that stage, um, he was very territorial. His area of the laboratory was like almost like fenced off, and he kept all his stuff within there. It was all very neat and tidy. But I, I don't think that is the way that an artist works. Whereas a scientist like myself, we like to keep everything on the shelves, everything in bottles, all neatly arranged. I think an artist is different, and I think if you visited. August's um, studio now uh, with uh, Bettina, you would find that it was a lot more ramshackle, but a lot more, you know, like his mind, you see. He, he does not have an organised mind. One cannot have an organised mind when one is jumping from style to style and painting, you know, 24-7. Um, I, I, I feel that although it was nice sharing that space with him, I think that uh, ultimately... Um, he he's better off in a a studio where he can spread out and uh, he can really sort of, uh, you know, um, yeah, sort of, uh, just just allow the work to develop um, in a space that you know it can spread out into. Yes, I was very very impressed with August's work, um, and I'm very pleased that I am one of his subjects. Uh, although I do look a little bit like a mouse in one of the paintings. But, you know, there's a side to me that is a bit like a little mouse. So I I, uh, I, I think it was very astute of him to, uh, to, to paint me in that way. Oh, yeah, um, uh, August Evans, he's uh, a real character, a real character. Um, it's uh, always pleasant talking with August. We... We tend to uh, discuss, I know, all sorts of subjects. Uh, we'd sit there over breakfast. Uh, I'd be eating, like, croissants and um, or maybe a bowl of cereal, and, he, and he'd be sketching me, sketching me. Um, and uh, I'm a, <laughs> he, 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 he made me look far more handsome than I think I actually am. Well, you know. Um, and, 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 you know, <laughs> he's, one of, he, he's, a, he's a friend, definitely a friend, and... Uh, I, uh, I, I am, I'm very, pl- I'm very proud to, to to be in a position where I see how he develops. Yeah, uh, you know how how things, uh, success has come for him, as it were. Yes, absolutely. Oh my darling, yes. Oh well, you know, um, uh. August and I are our brother and sister. So, um, so so uh, I there's so many stories I could tell you, but I, I know that's not what you want to hear today. But he he's always been talented, even before he he worked in art. He he was he's always been such a good mimic, you know, an actor, and um, well. Uh, uh, I've always been the doting sister. And, uh, nothing has changed. I still am. He impresses me every day. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, uh, I have a painting that he painted of me um, uh, that, uh, you know, um, that, that I, I hold very dear. I keep it in my study. It... Uh, you know, um, where I live in Berguria, I, I am a, you know, a very famous bear, Charlie Girl. Everybody knows that name. You know, to a certain extent, people know my name in the UK, in other countries, but in Berguria, I'm a big star. And yet, when I first met August Evans and he painted me, 
and um, he painted me. And, and, and there, there, there were two in this painting. There were two Charlie girls. There was one that looks like me, and then there was my reflection, which looks like a Charlie girl shaped pie. And you know that is true. I am half me. I am half pie. You know, uh, he's very clever. He's very clever. He's a very clever man. Yes, um, I, I love that painting. I, I love August Evans. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you know, August Evans said to me, when I met him uh, the first time, he said to me, Albert the Dragon, he said, Albert the Dragon, um, I want to see your fire. Uh, you, you have to, you know, you have to show me your fire. I want to paint it. So I, I sneezed on him and set fire to his coat. And, uh, you know, he, most people would run away screaming. He just shrugged off his coat and he started sketching it. Yeah, uh, I really didn't mean to sneeze on him like that. Um, but I was so surprised. Yeah, and, and it was the summer. There was quite a lot of pollen in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Tina Dupre is somebody who's known August Evans for many years in different guises as he has developed through his career. She was engaged to him before he became an artist, but their relationship broke up. But uh, since his return to the UK, they've got back together and finally got married. She is one of his biggest supporters. Oh, darling, uh, August and I, we like chalk and cheese in a way, but uh, we love each other. We love each other so much. Um, I I just let him get on with it. I love his work. I love watching him work. I mean, oh, the first time he started sketching in, when we were sitting there in Rule's restaurant. But uh, I thought, oh, gosh, I'm so embarrassed. But now I'm like, yes, this is, look, look who's painting. August Evans, yes. I, I love it. I love it. I do love uh, how creative he is. I love how much work he manages to achieve, whether it be a commission or something for himself. Um, this is why we are celebrating him now, so soon, you know. Um, he's only been painting for 18 months, and yet from his pickle hollow days right up until now, you know, uh, he has such a following, and uh, people love his work, and he, there is so much of it. You know, the, the paintings on display at this... Um, exhibition are just a small handful of of his favorite works and um i must admit that he allowed me to uh, to uh, help pick some of my favorites so uh, it's wonderful of course i myself paul shayeti I've known August for, for quite some time. Um, he lived in my house when he first came back to the UK and shared space in the laboratory beneath my flat. It, it was weird having him back. Um, and, and, you know, his interests before he went away were quite different. And suddenly, but suddenly he, there he was with a paintbrush uh, or, or, or a pencil in hand, just sketching away everything at life. Um, you know, that there are paintings of me where I look a bit like, um, I don't know, uh, a triangle. <laughs> they make me laugh. And yet there are paintings where um, I, I think, gosh, <laughs> thank you. You really flattered me. And, uh, of course, he, he painted my you know, Dealey the Cat, um, a star in his own right. Uh, it was a crowded house when he lived in the flat, and obviously he had all his paintings, but... Uh, when Bettina and uh, August announced they'd got married and he was moving out, it was a sad day because uh, I, I did enjoy the year or so that he lived with us. Bettina is one of my best friends, and, uh, as is August, so I, I get to see how things are developing and, uh, good boy, do they develop. And the commissions just keep rolling in. And, you know, um, and the amount of work that he, he gets... It, the quality does not diminish. It, it's still every painting, everything. It's 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 amazing. It, 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 it's great work, great work. Uh, I, I'm just pleased that he's being acknowledged like this. Oh well, you know, painting is it's just something that came to me later in life. Um, 
I, uh, I've always been a quite visual person. I, I've always liked to look at things, um, and um, you know, but I like to interpret them in my own way. Photography would never been um, right for me. Uh, I, I like to uh, put my own interpretation on what I see. It, it is life through my eyes, but that can be different from day to day. You know, somebody sits and, and wants a portrait done. And one day I might see them in shapes, or one day I may see them in colours, or one day I may see them, you know, as a very literal version of themselves. August Evans is a true inspiration. This is only the beginning of the story. So many paintings in such a short time. Some of them commissions, many of them inspired by life around him. In an age of selfies, if he goes to the theatre, he has to paint what he sees. If he goes for dinner, he'll paint that too. His range of subjects and styles is staggering. One thing we do know is that August Evans will continue to grow and that people will still be talking about him in years to come. He truly is the future of art. Hello again, listeners, Cuthbert here. Before we conclude this episode, I would like to present to you a brief segment that includes behind-the-scenes moments, bloopers, and outtakes from the making of Paul's fine August Evans documentary. Do please enjoy exclamation. You want me to help you with what, Paul? A documentary about August Evans? Why on earth, who wants that? I've been asked to do it. Bettina needs it. It's for a festival. What, what, what do you want me to say? You'll see. Just, just, I'll ask a few questions. You won't be in the whole documentary. You'll just be like somebody who, 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 who met him, who knew him, who knows him. Oh, uh, yeah, all right. Do I have to mention Damius? No, please don't mention Damius. Talk about when he arrived. All right, then. All right. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. August. Yes, I think, uh, yeah, I think this is marvellous. Oh, uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, I miss the old fellow, but, uh, yeah, I'd definitely like to talk about him. Oh, yes, ah, the marvellous August Evans. Oh, how we are so proud of him. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mum and I would uh, love to talk about him, wouldn't we, Mum? Oh, yes, my lovely brother. Oh, I was always proud of him, but now, oh... His work is just amazing. Well, it most certainly did shock me, Paul, because I don't know how Toppy didn't recognise him. I mean, well, I, he must he must need a new prescription for his glasses. It would have been obvious to me. It's really, really a tragedy uh, that I, I never got around to meeting August Evans oh. because I would have known Hello. immediate. Oh. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Uh. Hello? All I can say is that I'm awfully proud of him. Awfully proud of him. Uh, back in the day, he was the sort of person who he didn't stand out. A lot of the work he did when he was an actor uh, was very much in the background. Or even when he was in the, the forefront, uh, you wouldn't have realised it was him. And then he was very, it was always very subtle. But now, with his art, it's almost the opposite. It really is. Um, you know, he stands out, and people notice his work. And, uh, gosh, it's such a transformation. Such a transformation. I don't think anyone could be more uh, proud of of him than I am, but uh, wonderful. Oh boy, Paul, I, I wish I could have, um, you know, rounded up a few more people because... No, 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 no. Well, anyways, I, I hope it went well. I mean, I, I, it did, it did go very well and, and I, luckily, of course, all, all the, the, you know, it's a story of two halves, really. Um, mm -hmm. The hollow half and the... Uh, because you know, he actually lived in my house for a number of times, so we were all able to talk about him on a, um, uh, you know, and we, it's quite difficult avoiding the discussion. I think, I mean, there can be endless documentaries about how 
we got to the point of August being August, but I, I don't think that the exhibition wanted us to bring that up, so we didn't. Oh. Um, although we did refer to the fact that, yeah, yeah, he, that, that, uh, uh, we had known him before, but didn't realize, you know. Um, yeah. but no, it's, when you... you know, it's almost like my brush with celebrity, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, considering, you know, how well known August is now. Mm, I wonder if I should, uh, I wonder if he left anything that I could sell on eBay, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> this is the, the toilet seat that August Evans used to sit on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, I, uh, I won't lie. I've, I've, you know, I've, that's crossed my mind as well. Of course, uh, Walt and Jose are really lucky because they have so many of his original works. Yeah. Although the last time, you know, I don't know if it's my imagination. They seem to turn greener and greener. Mm. I think it's a trick of the light. But anyways. Um, I mean, didn't he make a lot of his, uh, his his early work involved? Wasn't he like using stuff like mud and, and moss and things? And yeah, but, uh, natural color, colored in the dye and stuff. So that yeah, might he be called wise. it. He, he called it something different. Uh, he didn't call it moss, but uh, I, th- I think he said lichen. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Is that possible? Yeah, no, no, that was that, that would make sense. Um, I don't think. I mean, everything's constantly changing. It's difficult to 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 keep up with uh, uh, what he's doing. Um, oh, I mean, I know, and I, I, I honestly. I don't know how you're going to put this all together in like how many hours did you get? Oh uh, well, you know, uh, I I I had about twelve hours worth of material. And I had to I had to squidge it down to just half an hour, but uh, oh. you know, it went down it went down well, and the exhibition went well. But uh, okay, good. Uh, you know, is this uh, am I going to be able to see it on Netflix soon? Uh, I, th- I think we can send you a copy. I I, I think because it was I, I don't know what the I don't know who actually owns the copyright. I think Patina probably, Patina and August probably do because it was for this exhibition, but I'm not sure. But I mean, I mean, if Netflix were interested, we could probably do an expanded edition. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just difficult. I mean, I can see at some point somebody's going to start digging into, well, who is this guy? And, you know, someone's going to let slip that, or they're going to go, just a minute, isn't, he looks very similar to that guy who, he was playing a tea kettle in that in that film, and someone's going to realise that Damius and August are the same person, and and then people are going to want to say, you know, well, why has this been never been discussed? And, I suppose you know, there's, um, you know, the, the idea of like somebody's defrauding somebody or something. Yeah, I suppose that could happen. You, yeah, you might want to keep uh, that a hush hush. I don't. The thing I don't is, know. we don't, and we don't even know. We that there is that year. Or a little bit less than a year because he came to Pickle Hollow at the end of that, um, towards the mid middle end of that year. But there was a good six months where we didn't know where he was. We don't know what happened. We don't know how he got to this this you know this this situation. And even when we hypnotised him and his inner persona didn't really seem to want to discuss it. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was just curious. Does he ever talk about the good old days in Pickle Hollow? Yeah, he has. He, he has done, but he's. He, I mean, this is where he and where August and Damien are very similar. That that kind of August sort of lives in his own little world, and he doesn't. He, he's a little bit emotionally stunted, I suppose, to put it blunt. Oh. All right, you, you know um, what I mean. He, he's very, or, or he's very distracted, or you know, um, the whole thing with uh, Bettina. You know, you wouldn't have thought that. I think it took a long time for him as Damius to get close to Bettina. Um, and with August, it was almost like that someone flicked a, a switch and suddenly they'd gone off and got married. You know, I, mm-hmm. I know that Bettina had decided that, that she was, or well, she wanted to be with him in whatever form, uh, you know, he, he, he was. But yeah, I don't know. To sort of express nostalgia or he's very much forward to think, you know, sort of the next thing, the next thing. The thing that has happened, which I don't think I've talked to you about, hmm. is that uh, he had a commission for, I think it's like 175 portraits of Bettina. Oh. Um, and we, Bettina called me over and she'd found out who the person was who had commissioned the paintings. Uh-huh. And it was her first husband, Max. Oh my God. Um, and now that first marriage was back in the 60s i think and she's not heard from him for years and recently i don't know whether she uh, around the time when she was sort of hanging out with long lost cousin algernon 
Um, I don't know whether he heard about this and was trying to contact her, but she ignored him. So the next step, so the next step for him was to co- commission 175 picture, uh, portraits f- from her new husband. I mean, um, anyway, this Max Dupre guy, he, he's involved in the art world as well. Oh. And he's opening a lot of galleries and, um, apparently considers Bettina as an inspiration and wants a picture of her in every gallery he's opening. Oh. Um, which you'd think would force Bettina to sort of have a conversation with him, but it's just not, it's just not happened yet. Um, mm-hmm. and well, that's, the, that's intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, so there may be more, there may be more to come with that. Um, yeah. I, I mean, of course, uh, um, August is now living with Bettina in her, in her big, big house. So we, we don't see them as much, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Boy, you know, I think back uh, how, well, let's just call it his former life. Uh, mm-hmm. They they were like literally minutes away from being married. Yeah, they were there at the, uh, the altar, weren't they? Yeah. And, now, uh, here's another thing I hope you explore in this, explored in this documentary is how the hell, <laughs> Paul, how the hell did he get famous in space before people on Earth saw his work? Remember, we went to an exhibition in space of mm. August Evans' work. Yeah, we, we only covered that briefly because it was – we did sort of say that – I think I can't remember who it was who said that it, it's like he's the first intergalactic yeah. you know, famous artist. Um, that deserves yeah. its own documentary alone. Yeah. I mean, it was diff- it was so difficult to pack it all in such a short time. Yeah. And I wanted as many talking heads. and But, yeah, it was mentioned but not – in a, in a in a great detail because it just wasn't the time, which is why I said I think if Netflix are interested, yeah, uh, an expanded it. documentary is is, is yeah possible. make it make it uh, six parts. You know they yeah. do that. You know I'm like yeah wow yeah seriously um, the but space think, connection is weird. I think um yeah I think that that, that was something that uh, that that Ick brought up himself. But uh, yeah well anyway thank you very much for helping. I'm, I know it was very short notice but. Uh, I think everyone involved was was happy with the final. Uh, okay, the great. Final I I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll, I'll ping a, a digital copy to you um, in the in the next few hours. So, uh, okay, cool. Well. Okay, well I'm sure we'll speak again soon. But, uh, um, All right. Okay. Um, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Me. Say hi to your Uncle John. Yeah, I will. Okay. Right. Bye for now. Bye. 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 Well, Bettina, how did it all go? Oh, darling, it went marvellously, marvellously. There was such a great turnout. And the documentary, was it uh, uh, what you wanted? Uh, You know, it it was difficult knocking it up in such a short time, but I enjoyed doing the work. Oh, darling, it was marvellous. I'm so glad you got all those people, particularly uh, the ones in Pickle Hollow. I mean... Oh, that wasn't easy to arrange. You did a very good job. Yes, I know that August was very pleased too. Well, I'm glad about that. Um, well, you know, maybe it will lead to even more commissions. Oh, darling, I don't know how he could even manage to do more than he's already doing, but, but I think you're right. <laughs> the phone's been ringing off the hook, darling. Has it now? Maybe you can clone him. You can know, have a few Augusts working around the house. I was thinking that maybe we should really follow that whole Andy Warhol thing, you know, get him to do screen printing. It would be so much easier. And then, you know, <laughs> other people could do it when he wasn't available. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he does work very fast, but I, I guess if the commissions are going to keep coming more and more, then it, it'll be hard for him. Yes, well, I mean, he doesn't show any signs of uh, the pressure getting to him, but... Uh... Yeah, well... To be careful with that, because he has had history of, well, you know, back in the damnest days. Yes, yes, I understand what you're saying. Well, I, I hope it doesn't come to that. I, I really don't. I think he copes very well with, uh, you know, it just makes him more excited to get these commissions. And I guess it can't hurt the uh, bank balance. Oh, darling, yes. I mean, it's a new situation for me. I'm the one sort of, well... um <laughs> I'm the one, um, you know, I still have voiceovers and conventions and I haven't really done any acting as such for a while. 
Uh, but, you know, now he's the one uh, bringing in the dollar. <laughs> yeah, it must be different for you. But uh, anyway, well, this is, I think that's about all we've got time for. So, uh, yeah, this whole August Evans documentary, it's, it's been quite an eye-opener. It all happened so quickly, and yet uh, it, it, it uh, has turned out well. And uh, and I'll be taking you for that meal soon, Paul. In fact, I, you know, I insist on uh, giving you a little gift as well, because, you know, your video has probably helped bring us more work. So, Well, you know, whatever you think's right. Bettina, I, I did it as a favour, so uh, I didn't expect uh, to be paid in, in, in the usual way. But uh, anyway, well, listeners, we'll be back again soon. We've got plenty of episodes in the can. You take care, and uh, we'll say goodbye for now. Right, goodbye for now. Goodbye, darlings. Goodbye. One million kisses, one million and one kisses. <laughs> You've not said that in ages. I know, darling. I thought I'd revive it. Yeah, yeah, the listeners will love that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. August. Um, I hear the uh, you know event in your uh, honour went very well. It most certainly did, Paul. Yes, uh, uh, it was a very nice day. I, uh, I I feel you know quite humble that I was asked to uh, bring my favourite pieces to exhibit, and uh, oh, your your documentary was was very was very good. Uh, I, I was glad that you got all my friends to speak about me. It reminded me, I, I must go back to Pickle Hollow. Yes, yes, I think you should, you know. I think the locals are, are pretty keen on your work, and uh, it is kind of where you, you started out. Yes, yes. Yes, I find it hard to think back before that. Yes, I find it hard to remember how I even ended up in Pickle Hollow. Well, I guess it was some sort of instinct. Yes, it was a confusing period of my life. It was, yes. 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 I, I, uh, I just found myself there. I remember a taxi or a car. Yes, I was being driven. Driven to Pickle Hollow. And then the door opened and, and a voice said, Here you are. It's time for you to get out of the car. And I, and I got out of the car. Oh. Yes. Very strange. Just come back to me. I can't remember where I got in the car, but I remember arriving in it. There was a man. He was wearing a face mask. It hid his features. But I remember that. I thought it was a bit strange at the time, but I guess it was around Halloween. Well, I think it was before Halloween. I remember thinking, I wonder if he's going to a party, a fancy dress party. Really? <laughs> well, never mind. You don't have to think about that. No, no, it's just strange how it suddenly came back to me. Yes, I would like to go back to Pickle Hollow, but I hope I don't see that man in the car again. No, no, I hope you don't. Oh, look, uh, the theme music playing. Time for us to go. Oh, yes, Paul. Well, thank you very much for all the hard work you did on the documentary. My pleasure, August. Yeah, my pleasure. This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at pride48.com. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's going on now? Oh, it's the Sky Life Podcast. Let's go. I have a voice. 
I have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. We have a voice. Unique voices in podcasting. Univospods.net. Hey, hey, Cromarty. What, Paul? What? I was speaking to August. Uh, he was thanking me about the, the, the documentary. Oh, that's good. Well, he must be very pleased with the work you did. Yes, I think he is. Um, in fact, I know he is. But it was weird. I was talking to him about Pickle Hollow and how he ought to go back. Oh, yes, he has many fans there. Yeah, we were talking about how that's sort of where his artistic career began. And uh, then he started saying stuff about how he couldn't really remember much before then. But then he started to say he remembered arriving in a car or a taxi and somebody in the taxi told him to get out and that this he was he had reached his destination. Did you mean the, uh, the the taxi driver? No, I got the feeling that he meant somebody in the car, like a fellow passenger, like somebody... And it just made me think, what if this person... Well, he also said that uh, the person was wearing a mask and, and he couldn't see the guy's features, but he was definitely a man. Well, he seemed to think he was, yes. Um, but uh, it makes me wonder if this wasn't the person who'd been, you know keeping him prisoner or or whatever was going on for the first few months of uh, 2020 after the whole business at the wedding and him vanishing and yes Paul I I wonder oh gosh do you think he's starting to remember he might be yeah I don't know if he should though I I I don't I I I sort of backed off asking him any more about it and I just I, I changed the subject um yeah well who could it be Paul the man in the mask well, of course, I, I thought of Algernon, long lost cousin Algernon. That's if we think that, uh, you know, the controller or the control incorporated was responsible. Well, Paul, yes, could well be. Well, it's very interesting, though. I guess these memories, if they do start to return, nothing you can do or say will stop them coming. Yeah, no, I just hope that it doesn't sort of confuse him or, or, you know, what if it brings, what if it brings Damius back to the fore? Demius can't paint. No, he he can act, but uh, huh. well, I don't know. I'm probably worrying needlessly, but uh, it was a bit of a surprise. I that's the last thing I thought he'd do to start remembering things. That wasn't my intention when I mentioned Pickle Hollow. No, Paul. No, well, I guess we ought to keep an eye on him. Do you think we should mention it to Bettina? Uh, maybe not at the moment. No, uh, um, I suppose we should ultimately, but. Uh, um, hmm. Yes, yes, well, how mysterious. Yes. Very mysterious indeed. I think somebody's listening in. We should probably change the subject. Oh, yes. Hi, hi Dales. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello, Dales. <laughs> we weren't talking about anything serious or important. No, no, no. Just talking about the weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just talking about the weather. That was a wonderful episode. Don't you stop it. I sure do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Peter Dupre. How can I help? Hi, Bettina. It's just me, Paul. I just, um, I just thought I ought to mention something. Oh, yes, darling. What's that? I was just talking to, uh, um, August. Uh, you know. Oh, he gave you a call. He did, just to thank me for what I'd done. And, well, we started talking about Pickle Hollow, and he started to have memories, you know, about how he'd arrived in Pickle Hollow. Well, that's unusual. He's never mentioned that to me. I know. I think talking about Pickle Hollow maybe made the memories surface. He said he'd arrived in a black taxi or something, and that a man in a, a mask had just sort of opened the door and said, like, here you are. Oh, my goodness. What else did he say? Not much else. I, I changed the subject. I, I was a bit disturbed. I, I, I'm just worried. What if those suppressed memories start coming back? How about it affect him? Oh, darling. Thank you for telling me. I, th- I had to. I had to. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, I was quite disturbed. Yes, darling. Well, uh, d- don't worry. I- I'll-, I'll keep an eye on him. I don't think it's a good idea to, to-, to bring up the subject of uh, of what happened before he arrived at Pickle Hollow. Yes, as you say, it uh, could be all sorts of problems. It could do, but I guess... If the memories start coming, I don't know what we can do about it. Well, well, yes, it's best to be prepared, isn't it, Paul? 
dear, oh dear. Gosh. <laughs> oh, well, you know, these things are said to test us. We've had such a lovely few days. Yes, well, no, I, I mean, he's not mentioned it to me. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine too, Bettina. I, I hope it will be. It will be, Paul. Don't worry about it. But thank you for telling me. Thank, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Anyway, um, I better go. Yes, darling. Thank you again. Bye for now. One million kisses. One million and one kisses. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, oh dear. No, oh, kitty, kitty, kitty. Per, per, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> oh, I love Dee <laughs> Well, gotta tell you, I didn't expect that. What were we saying? Uh, we can stop there or we can speak to somebody else or we can say more. Well, anyway. <laughs>